This video is sponsored by Logitech. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to compare all four Canon mirrorless full-frame cameras, EOS RP, R, R6, and R5. I have wanted to do this for a while now since I have used all of these separately but never at the same time and I'm just really curious to see if there will be a big difference. But before we go on, a little disclaimer. I will not be focusing on the technical side but rather review these cameras as a portrait photographer in a real life test during one of my usual photo shoots. If you would like to read up more on the specs, I will leave the links to the official Canon website in the description. Let's start with pricing. At the lower end, we have the EOS RP that retails for 999 American dollars. Next up, the R for 1,799, then R6 for 2,499, and finally the most expensive R5 at $3,899. Moving on to the build, the first thing that I want to bring up is the sensor or shutter curtain. I really love having it as I'm a super messy photographer and I change my lenses a lot during a photo shoot. So it's great to have this protective feature that will protect the sensor from dust and scratches. The only camera that does not have it is the RP and it is the cheapest one. Next is the dual card slot. The RP and the R have just one SD card slot. R6 has two SD card slots and the R5 has one CF and one SD card slot. For me personally, I don't care much about this in like 10 plus years of me doing photography. I've always used just one card and I never had any issues, but I definitely see how someone that's doing maybe wedding photography would like to have uh, the option of having two card slots. When it comes to layout and comfort, I don't have any problems except for the EOS R. For me personally, the shape, no joystick, and these touch arrow buttons, I still don't know what they do, just felt very alien. The R5 is my favorite by far, it feels the most like a DSLR to me but with some improvements. But overall, all four cameras are really easy to use, super intuitive. That's why I love Canon. Uh, touch screen is awesome and it's available on all four cameras. Uh, same with the flip up screen and Wi-Fi. Okay, now let's move on to the stuff that really matters for a portrait photographer. I started off by shooting some backlit portraits of Chantal in this nice spot. All cameras are set to portrait mode. White balance is set to 6500 Kelvins and I'm shooting raw. Uh, same ISO, aperture, shutter speed and I'm using the RF 85mm 1.2 on all cameras. So here are the pictures and before I reveal which one is which, I want you guys to guess and let me know in the comments if you were able to guess correctly which picture was taken on which camera. I was actually quite surprised at how different each picture looked when it comes to color. The R is the most green and dark, it's definitely my least favorite. RP has more green in it than the R5 and R6 but less than the R. R6 is the most warm, even a little bit too warm for my liking and the R5 for me personally has the most balanced neutral color but let me know which one you prefer. Okay, let's see some more examples from a different spot. I really, really love this place. It produces the most beautiful bokeh ever. So for this set, I decided to edit them to see how the initial color would affect my editing. I didn't look at them side by side, didn't try to match the color, just edited them as I normally would. And I don't want to hate on the R, but because it was so green from the start, it did affect my editing. I think my eyes just got used to it when I was looking at it, so it didn't look as green to me when I finished. But now comparing it to the other pictures, it really stands out. Yes, I could fix it, but I wouldn't even know that I needed to fix it if I didn't compare it to the other pictures. So for me personally, having that nice color from the start is super, super important. So I rate the R in fourth place, then RP, then R6, and the R5 for the color signs. But before we move on, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Logitech. 
I've been using their keyboard and mouse for years now and when they contacted me and wanted to send me an upgrade, I of course said yes. I got their new MX Master 3 series, MX Anywhere 3 mouse for Mac and the MX Keys keyboard for Mac. By the way, thanks to my husband for modeling his hand in this footage. The mouse is small, light, and it tracks on any surface, even on glass. Perfect when I'm traveling and editing on a laptop. The scroll wheel is super nice and precise and it feels really good in my hand. It's cordless and will work up to 70 days on a full charge. The keyboard is super sleek and light as well, but don't worry, it's built super solid with a single metal plate and it's grippy for no slip around your desk. And it's also illuminated. Fully charged, this keyboard will stay powered for 5 months with backlighting turned off or 10 days with the lights. If you order from Logitech, you can claim a complimentary 1 month Adobe Creative Cloud membership. So check out the link in my description if you guys are interested in any Logitech products and thanks to Logitech for sponsoring today's video. So what about the quality? The R6 is only 20 megapixels, the lowest out of four. I actually forgot that it's lower than the RP, which is 26 megapixels. And then we have the R at 30.3 megapixels and the R5 at 45 megapixels. So let's shoot in another spot and compare some more pictures. When I zoomed in at 500%, I noticed that the R6 and R5 are more sharp than the R and RP. I used autofocus and eye and face detection on all cameras. Uh, this is not surprising to me as Canon did work on improving the autofocus with the R5 and R6. Uh, it is not a huge difference, but for me personally, that's why I waited for the R5 and didn't go for the R when it came out. Then I took some pictures that included a lot of sky because I wanted to test out how far I can push the highlights. It's something I do a lot in my editing, so I was really curious to see the result. To me, they all kind of look the same. Uh, maybe the R6 has a little bit more of the white and the highlights, but yeah, overall, I think all of them did pretty good. Next up, I wanted to test the cameras in low light. So here are some shots at 3200 ISO. Personally, to me, they all look the same in terms of quality. And here's another one at 25,600 ISO. Uh, I personally never shoot these kind of settings. So for me, again, whole cameras did pretty good. But if you shoot low light a lot and can see a big difference, please let me know uh, what do you think in the comments down below. Finally, we have video. I'm not a videographer, but I do like to film little short bits in slow motion for my photo shoot. So I tested the cameras at 4K at 60 FPS. Well, I thought I'll be able to record everything in 4K. And then I remembered that the RP and the R shoot 4K only at 30 FPS. So I shot both of these in HD and 60 FPS. Then we have the R6, you can shoot awesome 4K footage here at 60 FPS, no problem there, and it has really nice in-camera stabilization. Same goes for the R5, it honestly has so many different video modes, like way too many, also shoots in 8K, and um, also has that amazing image stabilization in camera. The big difference I see here is the lack of modes and stabilization in R and RP compared to the R6 and R5. That's why I personally chose the R6 to film my YouTube behind the scenes videos on. R5 is also obviously great for video and now that I've got the software update, it has not overheated on me at all. So when it comes to video, RP and R personally, I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, I would go for the R6 or R5. So in conclusion, my personal rating for the cameras are R in the last place, then I would put the R6, 
and RP in the second. It might be surprising to some, but I really love that camera and you can't beat that price. And then in the first place, we have the R5. This is my main camera. It ticks all the boxes for me, even though it's very pricey. And with all that being said, can you still take awesome images on any of these cameras? Hell yeah, I have produced great images with all of these and if you put them side by side, I don't think you'd be able to guess which one was taken with which camera. So let me know if you have any of these or which one are you eyeing and want to get and I will have more gear reviews coming up very soon. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!